She found a secret passage in her husband's house. When she found out what was behind that passage, her life became a nightmare. One night, Laura was sitting in a bar, a bit discouraged with life, because things weren't going so well for her. Laura was 35 and hadn't finished her pedagogy course yet. But, thanks to a friend's recommendation, she was working as a teacher in a kindergarten for five years. However, a 29-year-old woman, a postgraduate in early childhood education, had just taken up her position. Laura was very sad. Besides being unemployed, she never had a serious romantic relationship before, and her dream was to get married and have children. Laura felt like she was just watching her life pass by, and she didn't want to reach 40 and have nothing to show. She was a very pretty woman. Her dark blonde hair highlighted her features and attracted a lot of attention. But Laura was very shy, and that made it difficult for her to start new relationships. Sitting on the other side of the bar, Laura noticed a man looking at her. He was a handsome, middle-aged man with brown hair and a well-shaved beard. He smiled at Laura and the woman smiled back, a little embarrassed. They exchanged a few glances and when the blonde finished her drink, she got up and left. But Laura kept thinking about that mysterious man. The next day, Laura went out and applied for several teaching job openings, but none of them wanted her since she hadn't even finished college yet. With limited options, Laura went to clothes, shoes, and cosmetic stores asking for a job. At one of the stores, she ran into the mystery man from the bar. They smiled at each other from afar and then he left. Laura thought it a great coincidence. She spent the entire day going from store to store looking for a job, any job. At the end of the day, Laura was exhausted. So she went to the same bar as the night before and secretly even hoped to see the mystery man again. But unfortunately, he didn't show. She was kind of disappointed that she missed the opportunity to talk to him as it was obvious that the man had also taken an interest in her. A few days later, while she was shopping at the market, she ended up running into Mystery Man again. He was already at the register, and Laura even thought about saying something to him, but while she struggled to make up her mind, he got his groceries and left. That was the third time they met and the third time she missed the opportunity to talk to him. Later, in the evening, Laura went to the bar again, and this time, the handsome and mysterious man was there too. Laura was embarrassed when he smiled at her, but now she was determined to talk to him. She hung around for a bit, plucking up the courage to talk to him. Then, while Laura was distracted, a waiter handed her a napkin folded in half and pointed towards the mystery, saying he sent it. The writing on the napkin read, Can I buy you a drink? Laura gave him a big smile and nodded. Then the man walked over and sat down next to her. The two started talking. The mystery man's name was Martin, he was 41 years old, and he was a real estate agent. He moved into town about two years ago for work, but he was very busy and had no friends. They spent the whole night talking. Laura was very excited and was lost in his word and in that beautiful smile. At the end of the night, they exchanged contacts, then said their goodbyes. After that first meeting, they met every day at the same time, at the same bar. Martin was very charming, and Laura was getting more and more interested. She was surprised when he said he didn't have any social media. He was old school and a very reserved man. Laura was even more interested in the handsome guy, and even though she found some things in his behavior a bit strange, she just ignored them and blamed it on the age difference. Days went by and the two kept seeing each other. Soon they started a serious relationship. Laura had also managed to get a job as an attendant at a cosmetic store. The salary wasn't that good, but it was enough to pay her bills. She was very happy with her new job and overjoyed with her new boyfriend. After three great months together, Laura asked her boyfriend why he hadn't introduced her to any of his family members yet, but Martin made up an excuse that he didn't have any relatives in the city and he wasn't very close or kept in touch with them either. Laura was a little suspicious of his answer, but she chose to believe that Martin was a grown man and must have had his reasons. He also had never invited her to his house, saying that he was renovating the kitchen and that everything was a mess but he would invite her when everything was finished. Sometime later, the blonde introduced Martin to her friends, however, none of them liked the realtor. They thought he was weird, empty, and superficial. It seemed that nothing he said was entirely true. They also didn't accept very well the fact that their friend had never visited the man's house or met anyone who actually knew. 
Every time Laura's friend went out with the couple, they would notice that Martin's actions were a bit strange. Something is just not right with this guy. That was what they always said to the blonde, who would defend her boyfriend saying it was just because he was an older man and more reserved. Laura's friend didn't approve of her boyfriend and always implored her to stay away from him, but the blonde was in love and just wouldn't break up with him. After dating for six months, Laura started talking about marriage, that it was her dream and she really wanted to start a family, and she was already in her mid-30s. But whenever she brought up the subject, Martin would act cold and say that he never thought about getting married, that he didn't think a piece of paper could determine his happiness, that what mattered the most was love and blah blah blah. The blonde was a little disappointed, but she thought that maybe, with time, he might change his mind. Then one beautiful Saturday, Laura woke up and checked her phone, and there was a message from her boyfriend. Do you want to come and have lunch at my house today? The kitchen is done and I wanted to make a special meal for you. I sent the address. The blonde jumped out of the bed, very excited, and started to get ready. All dressed up, she took an Uber and went to his house. Arriving there, she was amazed by the house. She could see that her boyfriend was doing pretty good for himself. It was a huge two-story house with a very large living room and a beautiful kitchen. The kitchen turned out beautiful. Complimented Laura, amazed at everything. Martin thanked her and guided her to the second floor. There were two single bedrooms, an office, and a master suite that was amazing. From the suite's balcony, she could have a beautiful view of the pool area. Laura found everything very dazzling, but she noticed that the organization and the decoration of the house were very feminine. There were some potted plants scattered around the house, patterned cushion covers, and some very delicate embellishments. It didn't look like a single man's house. When she mentioned the matter to Martin, he simply said that his mother had given him some decorations. Laura thought his cold answer was strange, but as usual she didn't make much of it and proceeded to have lunch. After a while, Laura started visiting the handsome man's house quite a lot, and soon he invited her to live with him. Why don't you come live with me? It would be the same thing as getting married. You wouldn't have to pay rent anymore. All of this would be yours. Laura was a little apprehensive at first. She told her friends, and they all advised her not to move in with him and not to trust the guy but she really wanted to. She was very much in love with him. After some time, the blonde decided to give it a try and moved in with Martin. There was only one thing though, Martin asked her never to get in his office. He said that it was full of important documents about real estate, and he didn't want anything to get ruined or go missing. She couldn't even go in the room to clean it up. Laura understood that he had a very important job and agreed to his request. Even though he didn't change his mind about officially getting married, Living with him was already good enough. The handsome guy was very attentive to her and gave her everything she needed. After a week living together, Martin asked Laura to quit her job since she no longer needed to worry about paying bills now that she was his wife. He also said she could finish her studies online so she wouldn't get tired of coming and going to college every day. She considered the idea for a moment but ended up accepting it. She quit her job and started her online course and surprisingly, she was very happy with her new life. Even though things were going well and she loved living with her new husband, Laura still kept feeling that there was something off and after a while, things started changing little by little. Laura began to notice that almost every night, Martin would wake up, get out of bed and take a very long time to get back. At first she thought that he might have insomnia, but whenever she asked him if he had slept well, he said that he slept great through the whole night which didn't make any sense. Some other times at dawn, the blonde heard weird noises. When she mentioned to Martin, he would say it was probably him trying to pick something up in the dark. But even during the day when Martin wasn't at home, Laura would hear the noises and they sounded like kicks in the walls. She started to get scared, but Martin insisted that it was all in her head and that was nothing to worry about. And so months went by. Laura took care of the house and tried to occupy herself with her online studies, while Martin spent the day away, working. Life wasn't bad, but for Laura, it wasn't quite what she wanted. Laura began to notice that some things were disappearing from the pantry, like bread, fruits, and even the meals she made, that was usually left over for the next day, were also missing. And when she asked her husband about it, he would say, I don't know, love, maybe you ate and didn't realize it. I ate and didn't realize? Laura thought suspiciously. 
Another thing that bothered her a lot was the fact that Martin never talked about himself or his past. Laura realized that she barely knew him. So one day while Martin was away at work, Laura tried to find out more about him. She went into his office, even though she knew she wasn't allowed to go in there, and started going through his things. She ended up finding a box hidden on one of the shelves with several pictures of Martin with a very beautiful woman. On the back of the photo was written, Martin and Diana forever. They looked happy in the pictures. Laura thought she might be some old girlfriend and didn't like that her husband kept a bunch of pictures of another woman. Laura kept looking for more clues of the man's past. She tried to access his laptop, but it was blocked. She tried several passwords, including her own name, but to no success. She decided to try one last time. She slowly typed Diana and pressed enter. The screen unlocked and her heart broke. Laura was already annoyed that her husband's password was the name of some other woman, but when she found several online purchases of feminine things like clothes, hair care, even sanitary pads, the blonde was filled with anger. She was sure Martin had a mistress, and she wasn't going to let that stand. When the man got home from work, Laura, furious, immediately confronted him, saying that she found out he was cheating on her, that he even shopped for his other woman. Martin was disappointed that she ran through his stuff. He gave the excuse that the purchases were for his sister, but Laura, still angry, interrupted him. Even sanitary pads, Martin? Doesn't your sister know how to buy them herself? The man said that his sister lived in a very small town with barely any access to good stores. So he did the shopping and had it delivered to her. But Laura didn't buy his story and asked, Then who is Diana? Martin almost fell back. How do you know about Diana? I saw the pictures you so fondly kept in your office. There's no use denying it. You're cheating on me, aren't you? She's your lover, isn't she? Admit it, Martin. The man took a deep breath and sat down on the couch. He looked at his wife with great sadness in his eyes, making Laura a bit confused, and said, Diana is my late wife. The blonde was speechless. She died in a car accident two years ago, said the man. I was driving and a truck hit the back of the car. We flipped. She didn't make it. Laura couldn't believe she acted so stupidly and immediately began to apologize to her husband. She was very embarrassed and could only say how sorry she was. She promised that she would never suspect him again or touch his things again. Martin said that it was fine and that now she knew why he was so reserved. The two hugged and kissed, then tired they went to sleep. After that unfortunate night, Everything went back to normal. Everything but those noises that Laura kept hearing. But at this point, she convinced herself that her husband was right and that she should just ignore it. However, a few days later, the blonde woke up to a very loud noise. She jumped out of bed and started screaming out for Martin, who, by the way, wasn't in bed. Since her husband didn't respond to her screams, Laura decided to go look for him. She walked all over the house and wasn't able to find him. She thought it was very strange and started to get really scared. When Laura got to the kitchen, she saw the pantry door half open and, walking slowly, she approached it. She put her hand on the doorknob and jumped scared when Martin came out of nowhere from inside the pantry. Laura thought that was really weird and scary. Oh my God, Martin. Do you want to give me a heart attack? What are you doing there at this hour? Said the blonde with her heart racing and very scared. I got hungry and came to get something to eat, love, coldly answered the husband. But didn't you hear the noise or me screaming? I heard a very loud noise and I called for you, asked Laura. No, I didn't hear anything. You must have dreamed and woke up scared. I was here in the kitchen all along and I didn't hear you call me, said Martin, a bit distracted. Laura was very suspicious, but she said that maybe Martin was right and that she would go back to bed. And the two went back to bed together. But the blonde was so scared, she couldn't even close her eyes. In the morning, Martin went to work, and it was the perfect opportunity for Laura to find out what was really going on. She went to the pantry, and everything was in place, nothing out of the ordinary. She stood there for some time, just looking closely, trying to figure out how Martin came out of there last night. It was a very narrow space that only held the food. Outraged and upset, she started going through the groceries. It was then that she noticed that the wall at the back of the shelves was dirty, with handprints. 
So she started taking everything out of the pantry and found a sort of door handle. When she pulled the handle, she discovered a secret passageway. It was as if the pantry was actually a secret door. Scared, Laura slowly walked in, and as she walked down the hall, she could smell a horrible smell of mold and feces. Laura kept walking until she reached some kind of room. The room was very dark. It had an old bed and next to it, a dirty, stinking toilet, and there was rotten food all over the floor. Laura almost jumped back when she saw a woman handcuffed with her arms up, the woman with her body full of terrible bruises and unconscious. Laura ran up to the poor woman and saw that she was actually Diana from the pictures. Laura was completely shocked and started to get desperate. Diana woke up and started crying, asking for help. She said that she was Cole's wife and that he trapped her there for months because he was crazy and too possessive. Cole? But his name is Martin, said Laura while trying to free the poor woman from the handcuffs. At that moment, she heard Martin shout her name upstairs. Terrified, Laura ran back to the kitchen and quickly tried to close the pantry's door without making a sound. But it was too late. The horrible man was already behind her. What are you doing? Martin asked. Laura tried to act like nothing happened, and she was only looking for something to eat. But the man, whose face was now terrifying, caught her by the wrist and noticed that she was trembling. It was then that he saw the groceries scared everywhere and the secret pantry door half open. He turned his angry gaze at Laura and said, So you found out about me, didn't you? Then he hit her on the head, making her faint. He dragged the blonde back to the secret room. And when she started tying up Laura's hands, the blonde, who was only pretending to be passed out, abruptly hit Martin's head on the wall, making him lose balance and fell on the floor. Laura immediately attacked the man and the two struggled in a corporal fight. The blonde jumped on his back and hit him over the head with a broken wine bottle she found on the floor. Martin dropped cold on the floor. Laura tied up his hands and legs behind his back and made sure he couldn't escape. She found a small handcuff key in his pocket and freed Diana, then helped her get out of that horrible prison. Laura placed Diana on the couch and gave her a glass of water, then hurried back to close the pantry door. She looked at the door with a broom so Martin couldn't get out. Laura called the police and in less than 10 minutes, there were five vehicles at the house. The cops arrested the terrible man and took Diana to the hospital. The next day, Laura got the news that she helped arrest a psychopath that was wanted for by the police for years. The man, who was actually called Cole, had been wanted for two years for the alleged murder of his wife, who he kept locked up in that room all that time, and that they were glad he wasn't able to do the same to her. Laura, traumatized, moved out of that hideous house and started a new life in another city. She managed to finish her college, and after she graduated, she got a great job as a teacher. A few years later, she met the love of her life. They got married, and Laura was soon to be a mother. Laura got the family she always wanted, and they lived a very happy life. If you like the story, surely the next video that's appearing on your screen will move you too. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, give us a thumbs up, and activate the notification bell so you won't miss any of our next videos. A huge kiss, and see you in the next story.